it was pretty easy. I mean, I I love Vim. You know, I I love his films. I love his sensibility. I I love. I think he makes art for art's sake, and that's very hard to find sometimes. And um, so I was just really, really thrilled um, uh, that he approached me with the part, and and uh, and I thought it was a really interesting film. And 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 Sarah was, you know, complicated and going through all kinds of stuff in her life, and so there was it was a lots to explore. Well, um, if we get to watch her develop over, you know, very briefly at times, but over about a course of about 12 years, I think. So, um, so yeah, it's just sort of, um, watching her as a young woman struggling with this young man and trying to make this relationship work, which is fairly tumultuous and, um, and how does she relate to him? How does she inspire him? And, and how does he make her happy? And, and what is she getting in return? And then how she carries that relationship over the next 12 years. And um, you realize, you know, that she's quite hurt and feels um, a little bit left behind by him. And that that hurt is, is still, much to her surprise, just as strong, you know, when they meet each other randomly way down the road. So I think she has a great deal of love for Thomas and, um, and a lot of, um, it's, it's, it's a difficult relationship for her to find her way through and try to keep him, um, yeah, inspired as an artist, but also grounded as a, as a lover and a partner. Vim was very open to doing a, a slight French Canadian accent, which which was great because it it can inform the character so much, um, and uh, so so it was great to play with that. And you know, there's a certain sensibility that that comes with that. Uh, you know, not to make gross generalizations, but I, I, what I love about French Canadians is that they're so open, you know, and their heart is really on their sleeve and, and, um, they don't necessarily mince their words. So it was finding this, this balance with Sarah of, of being tender and treating Thomas gingerly at times because he's going through a lot, but also being honest and finding her own truth and being able to communicate with him what's going on with her too so um yeah so I sort of played with that a little bit and uh and had an amazing dialect coach here uh named Francois Gris who um was just a delight to have on set and and uh, he helped me out a lot so that was great too yeah I think they are a bit moths to a flame you know that and I think no matter how much time passes that doesn't go away, you know, with people in your life that you have that connection to. It's it's sort of lifelong. So, yeah, I think it doesn't mean you should be with a person, but, <laughs> but you know, it's always there. And uh, Yeah, it was um, short but sweet. Um, he's, su you know, I think he's such an immense talent and... Um, and he's so soulful, you know, he, he can do so much with so little, he can say so much with his eyes and his being, and, um, and I think Thomas is that, is that way too. Uh, but unlike Thomas, I think James has a real lightness to him, you know, he, he is a lot of fun um, to work with, and he takes everything in stride, and kind of he can, I feel like he can do anything. He's very kind of malleable and flexible and, and very generous. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was funny to see him inhabit this tortured person because he's, he's, you know, so not that way and, um, great to be able to watch him flip in and out of character so easily. And, uh, yeah. And I've wanted to work with him for a long time. So this is, this was lovely. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was a real privilege, um, and, you know, I, he was just a delightful person to be around, which is, you know, the bottom line, you just want to have a great experience and have a good time, and, and uh, so 
I just really, he was just incredibly supportive and, and positive all the time and, and gives actors a great deal of, of space and room. Um, but also, you know, as you said, he's such a visionary. He really has something in mind and, um, and so you can lean on that and rely on it and feel quite free to explore and, and know that, you know, he's guiding you all the way, but with a very gentle touch. So I loved that. And, um, and I just think he's, he's such a unique, he has such a unique voice in the film world. He's very brave and always trying new things. And, you know, this 3D, th you know, approach is, is unheard of. And, and I love the way he's, he's using the technology. And so, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm a big fan of his. And, and uh, that was just reinforced by, by getting to work with him. Uh, n not too much. I mean, that was the nice thing. It, it wasn't too, it wasn't unlike regular filming. Um, the cameras are a little bit different and, uh, the, you can't do a lot of, a lot of movement, but the, this film doesn't lend itself to that necessarily anyway. Uh, but I, I kind of appreciated that too, because, you know, you come into the scene and, and, and Vim would have done the choreography. You know, it's, it, was, it was a little bit more particular, the blocking. But I really enjoyed that because, you know, the emotion that you're trying to go for is, was intense at times. And you, so you could just focus on that and not be so worried about, you know, the particulars of where you're going to walk or on what line you're going to sit here or there. You know, you could really let go of all of that. So I found that quite liberating. Um, and yeah, so I, I didn't, I didn't notice anything different really beyond that. And, uh, yeah, and I'm just so curious to see what it is, what it's going to look like. I, I have to admit, I've never been a fan of 3D. I, I always found it takes me out of the film, but then I saw Pina, Vim's last film and and I thought, this is how dance should be seen. You know, I, I thought you should never see dance on a flat screen. You know, you should only see dance live. And then he changed my whole theory about that and, and, and that 3D can be quite magical and, and really suck you in and, and um, just enhance everything. So I'm so happy he's got his hands on it. And, He's using it so well. It's really, it's really exciting. I think it could change a lot, and and uh, you know, I sort of just wanted 3D to go away, but now I, I, I just, I like that it's taking on a new life. It could be really exciting. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed all the scenes. I, I felt like I came in in the morning sometimes feeling kind of nervous and heavy, like. Oh, there's some tough scenes today. How's this going to go? And and then I always left feeling very light and full of joy and um, like we'd really found something. And, you know, and, and, and it was not easy, I wouldn't say, but there was an ease to it that made it really enjoyable. And so I don't know that I have a particular favorite. I'm very curious to see. I'm not a part of these scenes, but the scenes that um, are described as having the heightened reality when kind of the whole hue of the film takes takes on a different flavor and um you know this heightened reality that obviously the 3d will um help with but yeah i just i love those scenes when i read them and i th i i couldn't quite put my finger on why but um they seemed really magical and whimsical and and you know just juxtaposed with this particular story I think it could be very emotional um well I just I just think it's uh I just like the way the script deals with these very complex uh human emotions and difficulties and uh finds the the light in the darkness and what what is it to have regret and um how do you turn that into something else and yeah i just i just thought it was dealing with stuff that um that's that's tricky and it did it in a very poetic 
thoughtful way that, that I think will make people um, wonder. Yeah. <laughs>